Hi, hello, this is David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation with a note about downloading grib files from the internet uh, using um, the new viewer, or relatively new viewer, XY Grib. That's also new on the market, and this came about because in our weather course, we have a question here, 203 number 26. Explain how you could download grib formatted weather maps for pressure and wind within 300 miles either side of the Bahamas, centered at Nassau. Be specific enough that a reader could follow your instructions. Well, um, the issue is this is a very long quiz, so I'm going to make this video, and then this question is going to be changed to confirm that you watched the video. And that'll be that, because they got a, they've got a lot of questions here to do on this quiz, and it's a, it's a big one. So we'll shorten that up. So let's start, and we'll get the new, uh, go to the new, um, go here to open Gribs. Now, um, the program we're talking about now is XY Grib. Now, there's a very famous ZY Grib, and this is uh, essentially replacing ZY Grib in the sense that this one will be continually updated. It's uh, generated and developed by David Gall in uh, Israel, who also provides a great source of weather data here at Open Skyron. Is that going to work? Yeah, he has here a bunch of... Uh, really nice uh, source of, uh, uh, of uh, data but we're not we're not going to worry too much about that right now because we're just looking for the time being to G get a standard GFS map wind and pressure GFS later we can come back and took a look at the details uh, some details but so here is a download so you go to here to downloads XY uh, um, files. Now, first you'll note there's both a PC and a Mac version, and as far as I can tell, they're exactly the same. I note one minor, minor bug in the Mac version so far, but I'm sure that'll be fixed shortly, at least perceived from here. I'll show you that. Not important. So you download the program and install it for Windows or Mac. I'm starting out here on a Mac, and I'll show you the program on a Mac. So it looks like this. Those who are familiar with Zygrib You'll know all about this because this looks just like Zygrib. Zygrib is open source code, and he, and I believe this is now just being redone and developed further. But it's going to look just like Zygrib. And there's tons of movies and videos and articles on how to use Zygrib. It's been very popular, a free open source viewer for a long time. So let's get back to our problem. We want to find the map. With the, well, I must have looked at okay so I'm I'm rolling the mouse in and out to just change this here. So we want and, and let's suppose for example that uh, we don't know exactly where uh, Nassau is. So what we could do is here. Let's see what is this? Uh, uh, one of these. Oh, let me see. Right click. Mark a point of interest. I'll just put mark a point of interest. And we're supposed to find Nassau, N-A-S-S-A-U, in the Bahamas. And then our, um, let's see, 29, where is a Nassau here? Um, uh, which one are we working on? Number 26. Oh, okay. So look, it's at 25, 25 north. 2505-7721. So this is just a way that you could get to a specific place. Just right-click this, mark a point of interest. Let's call it Nassau, N-A-S-S-A-U. And this is at uh, 25, enter. And then this was, I think, 05, enter. See, it looks like, it's, look at that, it's very nice, it's picking up, I don't have to worry about the minutes and seconds and everything, 77, enter, and I think, I think that was 21, enter, okay, and say okay, and so there's Nassau, and that's probably right. Um, now, the other thing I'll just mention, this is a um, pretty good resolution for a base map, but there are a, a very high resolution public domain base maps, and we can load those in here, and I'll come back with that. That's, a, that's another subject that we don't need right now. So then we want th 300 miles within here. So we have to just look at what do we, here's up here in the corner, up in this corner is where the latitude longitude is. See, that's 25, that's 26. 
So there's 10 degrees. 10 degrees. No. Yeah, no. 24. 26. That's two, that's two degrees. Two degrees, 120 miles. So we want something like twice that. So, but just for the point here, let me roll that in. You could probably also do plus and minus like that. But let's just say that I'm going to call that 300 miles. You'll pass a test on that for sure. Okay, so there's 300 miles. So I have, I'm with this plus key here. That's how I define the region that we want. Then the way you get the files is you hit the globe key. You hit the globe. And that brings up this. Uh, the download to Gribs, and this is just this is our box that we've already defined. We're going to use a GFS model, and if you go to the uh, Open Skyron, you'll see what these other models are. I think Icon might be the German model, but let's for now we're just taking the US GFS model, and then you can get waves later on. So far, I don't see currents in here, but you can download the currents from, say, SailDocs, and they'll open up in, in this program just fine, even though there's not, for the moment, a way to right-click and actually download it. That's not an issue. And we want wind and pressure. Now, look at this resolution, 0.2. Point two. That's not right. Point two five. See, this is. There's just. Let me just see if I make this bigger. That, no, it doesn't make any difference. This is just kind of like a little minor display here. This actually is point two five degrees for. Well, okay. An interval three hours. Let's just say we take. We want to map every three hours. You could do every six. Every. That's probably a twelve. So this is this picture here has a minor kind of minor display bug in the um, Mac version. This doesn't show up if I go quick take a quick look. Uh, let's see here. Here's a PC. Here's a PC. Let me just do something. Click this. So you see this is a lot tidier over here in the PC. But that doesn't affect anything and I'm sure that'll all get sorted out. The data and options are all the same. It's just at least in my Mac, which is the latest version of the window of the Mac system running some MacBook Pro or something, doesn't work, doesn't work out quite right on this display. But everything functions properly. That's not an issue. So, so this should be 0.25. Now, just in passing, and that's not really part of our subject here, but this says 0.25 resolution. The GFS model is actually available at half that resolution, but not many, not many of these public interfaces show that. If you go, if you use our textbook and go online and get the data directly, you can get it at, at better resolution. The other thing in Interesting in the last, I don't know, some months, the GFS model is now actually available in every hour. So I'd have to, again, not many people offer that, but it is available in our textbook, Modern Marine Weather, explains how to do that. And this is how long. So for now, we just, three days is fine. So then run cycle. Now, this is a very nice feature of the program. A lot of programs, just you just click the button and you take the latest and you don't have any choice. But here, you can actually say, I could take the latest, which is your normal choice. See, it says last. That really should be latest, etc. They'll fix that. But um, you could actually get any one of these synoptic times. And then once you start, if like if I start at latest, let's say the latest is zero right now, but if I went at 12, then I would start at 12Z and then carry out my uh, three days from there. But... Uh, that's, that's, uh, so that's a nice option that you have if you're trying to go back and understand some past data. Again, this is surface data here. Altitude data. Now, look at this. We just selected a, let, let me back, I'm showing something here. We selected this region here, three, roughly 300 miles around there. And um, it's telling us how big the file is going to be. See, that's already a pretty big file. But I have this 850 clicked in here. Let me go back to the surface data. Relative humidity, let me shut that off. So now we're still, we still got a pretty large file here, 250 kilobytes. And then altitude data, wave data, we don't have any wave data. And later we'll come back and show this, but you turn on the SKU T, which is a really nice feature of this program, a unique feature almost of this program. The only other viewer I know of that has SKU T demonstration is a uh, expedition. 
Uh, but if you turn on SKU T, now you see you're up at six megabytes, 5.8 megabytes. So we have to be careful that we don't ask for more than we need. I don't actually quite see why that's 0.25, three hours. Well, okay, that says 254 kilobytes. Now, in actual practice, you may not need 0.2. You could go to 0.5. Now you're down to 73. And you may not need every three hours. You go to every six hours, right? Every six hours, now you're down to 32 kilobytes and so forth. But for now, let's just go every three hours at 0.25 for three days. Again, look at this. If I go up, well, any it, it'll go this actually, GFS data actually goes out 16 days, something strange, Three, well, 384 hours, whatever that is. But beyond about four, four days at 96 hours, that's about as far as things are reliable, but sometimes you may want to take a longer look. Uh, that's that. So then uh, what do we do? We just click download, where's that? Download. And then it's going to tell us where the files go. Here's the name of that file. It's got the date and some other parameters here. It's, it's compressed, but it'll uncompress it automatically. And this tells us where it's storing it. So it's in uh, on a Mac. It's users, a computer user, and then it's a made a file, xgrib.grib. So that's where these files are. Oops, cancel. I better be careful. Um, I'm going to say download. Oh, I did download it. It's downloaded it twice. We'll say, okay, I'm going to say save. So now it's in there, and now it loaded. So there's the data. That's the answer, basically the answer to the problem. And now you can then, you see if you read up here in the corner, you can read the uh, wind, and here are the isobars for the pressure, like this. And you have various display options. Then you can step through the time. Oops, that's moving the chart. Uh, here's probably the times, yeah. And there you're stepping through the times. So you're seeing the data. Also, you can zoom in. You can zoom in. Remember, I have, haven't played with this enough yet, but the, the base resolution of this is a quarter, is a point, point 0.25 degrees. So if it, go, if it shows closer than that, it's interpolating it. And then maybe later we'll come in and look at these different, uh, that's 10 meter wind, that's right, and, uh, and so forth. So that's, that's the, the main answer, how you get these grid files. Then there's all sorts of things we can do afterward, and it's very nice. This one will also let you print something like, uh, well, a uh, mediogram, sort of like a mediogram here that shows the data over the times period it's shown. Really, really nice program, and, it, and we're really happy to see that it's going to be maintained and indeed expanded. So that's the end of this note, and uh, from now on our students won't have to write this all out in words. They can just say, I watched the movie, and then they pass that question.